That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today we are going to be listening to the entire Megadeth Rust in Peace album. I am super stoked. Y'all voted for this last week in the poll and here we are finally sitting down and we're doing it. So Spooner cannot do that. Spooner's in his crate. He's in his in the room with us. Uh, and he really wanted to be close to mama. So if you hear dog noises, that's what it is. Um, but yes, full length album, Rust in Peace. I'm here for it. Megadeth, all I know is that they are one of the big four uh, founders, founding fathers of thrash metal. I've never listened to Megadeth or really any of the godfathers of thrash metal. So uh this will be the first of uh the four so very excited <sighs> hair um before we get into the video if you want to subscribe to the channel feel free to do so uh, i post weekly videos also we have a discord called the mosh fit that you can join i'll have an invite link down below you can uh join and we talk about metal we share memes we share pics of our pets and it's a fun environment, I think. So you're more than welcome to join. Uh, and let me know in the comments down below more stuff about Megadeth. It's a blind reaction, folks. I don't know anything. So that's what we got. Let's get into the video. So also, I believe that Rust in Peace is like one of the more like iconic big albums um, in Megadeth's discography. Um, just looking at like the top five songs on Spotify for Megadeth, three out of those five are from this record. And, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, just looking at the track list, like Holy Wars dot 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 The Punishment was like one of those songs and that's the first song off this record. So. This must be a pretty freaking banger of an album. So I'm very excited. We are going to jump right in with Holy Wars, The Punishment Due. There is a music video. Wow. hair metal bands, metal bands in the 80s, just like with no shirt on. And they look buff as hell, but there's just, none of them have shirts. They all have these banging bodies, no shirts, tight jeans and guitars and long hair. <laughs> I love it. want to like ride a Harley. Ooh. Oh. Okay, this music video is awesome. <laughs> Dude, I love the like box that the drummer is in. He's like in his own little box thing. Holy cow. And they're all like in a circle facing like away from each other. Ooh. And the transitions, all the little transitions are super clean and they're just like ba da ba bam ba da ba ba. Mm. Holy crap! Dude, the 80s 
for just a different time. Different time. This music video is awesome. <laughs> this like moving skull thing and like the, the mini clips and flashes of their face. That transition. Holy wars. Oh. 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 That was juicy. And I love that they didn't have any vocals like right off the bat. It was just like this nice instrumental for like a minute or so. Mm. makes me think of summertime, dude. I don't know what it is about metal, man. It makes me just want to, like, be out in the sun, driving my car on a country road, you know, switch between my Johnny Cash and my metal. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, Megadeth. Holy crap. Yeah, this already is, like, so my thing. Mmm. Oh. Summertime jam. reverb too to like and I'll take my thoughts away clean stop dude they had a lot going on in here I really loved that like bridge instrumental part little bit of like a solo and solo really nice nice breakup within the song and I really loved the killings killings Wow. Ooh, his guitar tone was like really rich. Mmm. Oh, there's so much. I'm so listening to that again. Ah. We have another person that passed away in this band. Somebody said, great drumming on this album. Rest in peace, Nick Menza. I guess, you know, this was the 80s and they look like they were probably in their 20s. Ah. Uh, 
the greats. No expensive cars, no hot chicks, no wads of cash, just four shirtless dudes shredding like gods in a warehouse. Pretty freaking much. That's really all you needed in the 80s. Um, oh my god. I'm already here for Megadeth, honestly. Holy Wars lyrics. Well, we're just gonna take a quick dive into some of the lyrics. Opening song off Megadeth's... Okay, this is their fourth studio album. The song consists of two different parts. Oh! So is it like two different songs together, but it's like one song, but just like with two chapters? Uh, first half is Holy Wars. It's written about a religious conflict in Northern Ireland, which started in 1960, but has roots as far back as the 17th century. The story of Dave Mustaine's Inspiration for the song is outlined in the liner notes of the 2004 re-release of Rust in Peace, originally taken from an interview with the UK magazine guitarist. Whilst on tour in Northern Ireland, we, he was dissuaded from taking action against bootleggers selling Megadeth t-shirts as they claimed it was to help fund the cause. Dave liked the sound of the cause, so dedicated a cover of the Sex Pistols' Anarchy in the UK to shout and give Ireland back to the Irish, the ones for the cause, anarchy in Ireland. Ooh, this resulted in a near riot and Megadeth had to leave the city of Belfast in a bulletproof bus by police escort? Holy crap. The Punishment 2 was written in reference to the Marvel comic book The Punisher. Megadeth had also referenced The Punisher in an earlier song Killing is my business, and business is good. I think I've heard that title before. Damn. You have to leave in a bulletproof bus? Brother will kill brother, spilling blood across the land, killing for religion, something I don't understand. This is in reference to holy, to holy wars, generally and specifically the Northern Irish conflict between Protestants and Catholics. Interesting. Punishment is due. Some people risk to employ me. Some people live to destroy me. Either way, they die. They die. These lyrics are about war. Some people employ war as a method to get what they want, but it's a risk to them as well. Others work slash live to end war, but the last lyric of the verse states that everyone dies anyways, war or not. It could also mean death for the same reason as above. Yeah, I'm so here for it. I'm super, super here for it. Uh, yeah, I can definitely see why that is, like, one of the top five best songs in their discography, honestly. So we have Hangar, Hangar, 18. In 1947, near Roswell, New Mexico, eyewitnesses reported something had landed. Oh, a spaceship. Yeah, alien spaceship. I love aliens. I also love that their mascot is like a skeleton with this like super defined skull with goggles on it. I think that is so sick. Dude. So much hair. I haven't seen a single face, just hair. Oh. Dude, with the toxic emblems on his drums. Oh. Wow. Solo. He looks a lot like the singer for Morbid Angel. I love his like long ass, just like it almost looks like doll hair, like a wig. I freaking love it. Also, this is giving me like major alien vibes. And Alien is one of my favorite movies of all time. This is like I, I'm so happy right now. Oh. Whoa. 
Oh, we changed. Ooh. Hot girl. She's bouncy as shit. Witness reports were denied by the authorities. <gasps> Dude, that song felt so long, but it was like so much shorter than the first one we just listened to. There was a lot going on. We just went through like four different chapters, and I loved the switch too. But no, 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 no. I don't know. We like went into a totally different time change sort of thing. I love the bounce. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. It's bouncy. I got I got the hair, I got the solos, I got the face. Good transitions. Good summer jam in my car, windows down, hair going everywhere, dogs sticking their head out the window. On the way to the beach, mega death. Absolutely. Oh, this would absolutely be good, like torrential downpour. I'm in the house in my jammies, cleaning. Like, I, mm, I love this kind of music. Holy crap. Okay, you have to tell me, like, what you think of the other three albums before this. And, oh, you have to also let me know, did this, like, slap you in the face when it first came out? Tell me your first experience. Like, what was it like first listening to this album? That's the question I'm asking you. Um, cause I love to hear y'all's stories of like when you first heard these types of records, cause you're watching my first experience. I want to hear about yours. Off Megadeth's Rest in Peace is about the story of an Air Force base in Dayton, Ohio, where some people believe the alien bodies were taken when a UFO supposedly crashed in Waswell, New Mexico in 1947. The remains were apparently later taken to Area 51 in Nevada, and many people believe they are still there. What are your thoughts on that? Do you believe in aliens? Do you think Area 51 is like, got aliens in it? I do. I believe in extraterrestrials. The song features 11 guitar solos. This is not the same one I listened to, with a running time of only 5 minutes and 15 minutes seconds oh i listened to the music video one. Oh, there's more it was an idea that nick menza came up with the idea is based on a place in the four corner state region of the united states the place where the military intelligence is housing alien aircraft and alien life forms not that i subscribe to this point of view or any of that kind of bs but Nick is way into it. I mean, the guy thinks that Jesus was a Martian. But I guess those of you who know Nick probably know that the possibility, the way he explains it, it could be real. So he tried to bring it to you guys in a song form, and it's up to your imagination to see whether or not you believe it. Ooh, a sequel was made on their 2001 album, The World Needs a Hero. Does that mean we need to listen to that album too? 
Ooh, I'm so here for the alien aspect, though. Like, for real. Okay. We have Take No Prisoners. Ooh. Stops, dude. Oh, they kissed me. Wow. Such a good callback. With those frickin' group vocals, it sounds like you're in a pub. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I loved the stops. And there was a lot layered there, too. They kept some time, they added some time, they shortened some of the bars. Mmm. And I loved the section where everything stopped, but they kept the guitar going. And then they all came back in and finally just like finished it, finished the instrumental part out before the vocals came. Wow. Face is being mistreated in a such good way. Just mm. ah. transition it was like double time kind of like for most of the song and then this section just feels just so much more open almost like we're listening to like halftime but it's just nicely opened it seems like the solo that he's playing would be really hard to play is it easy or is it difficult or is it like in between because he's ripping on that thing mm -mm. there's so many things happening this track is just layered the stops are delicious and it's like every time they have it's like they they do these stops with the solos in between and they have vocals and a verse and then this second stop with the solos and everything it was delicious and it was a little different it was like a little different than the first time they did it. Good technicality. Good stuff. Good things. Let's continue. Oh, 
that's a banger and a half. There's so much that they're doing. I'm overwhelmed. I'm catching all of these little things that they're doing production-wise with the record. And it's like too much to even just say. <laughs> but I'm noticing it. Wow. I really loved the ending callback to Take No Prisoners. And I like how you would expect them to immediately go into it, but it's almost like they wait just a like bar, like a measure, and then Take No Shit. And then the last one, Take No more instrumental shit and the final shit all the group vocals beautiful reverb it kind of makes me want to be in like an irish pub it's giving me some like you know big wooden bar irish pub vibes just i think it's the group vocals it just makes me think of like you know all those movies with like boston Boston boys in Irish pubs and they're drinking and singing Irish tunes and This is a whole ass mood oh. Taking up prisoners is a blasting anti-war anthem that highlights the irony and double standards of war So another song about war I was finally fed up with all of the shit that I had put up with from Jeff and Chuck and was having so much fun with Nick and Marty that I started writing the most obnoxious stuff that I could think of. I did not take into account that Marty was Jewish and singing about the Panzer divisions and having him sing backups was not cool. Now that I think about it, I do, however, say my favorite line that I always tell new bands at the end of this song, take no shit from anyone ever. Really good advice. The song uses a completely re-recorded track for the 2004 remasters. Dave Mustaine could not find the original vocal tracks. Oh, he lost the original vocal tracks. This is the same case for Five Magics and Lucretia. Although for these, Mustaine used pre-recorded alternative vocal takes. Interesting. Yeah, he was in... Metallica, right? That's something I read. Dave Mustaine. I think that is correct. Co-founder and lead vocalist, guitarist, and primary songwriter for the thrash metal band Megadeth. Prior to forming Megadeth, Mustaine was the original lead guitarist of Metallica, but did not appear on any of their albums. That's right, because he is, the story goes that he was in Metallica, but then, like, some shit happened, and he was like, nah, fuck this, I'm outie, before they really, like, did anything. Because this was, like, a long time ago. I think that's the story. Let me know more information. Damn, yeah, because Metallica was started... What, in like 1982 is when he was in there? So he was only in there for about a year. Why did Dave, Dave get kicked out of Metallica? Mustaine was officially ejected from the band because of his alcoholism, drug abuse, overly aggressive behavior, and personal clashes with founding members Hetfield and Ulrich. <coughs> in April, on April 11th, 1983. Interesting. And that was before they ever recorded anything. All right. The history. It's all coming together. Um, okay. Wow, I'm learning so much. This is why we're, we're, we're jumping more into these, like, pioneer bands. Because I want to start with the beginning of, of metal. You know? I've already listened to Black Sabbath. Unintentionally, I didn't know that they were considered some of the godfathers of metal. So here we are with Thrash. We're building the base layer, okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Five Magics is our next song. 
nice. Got the drum fill. Ooh. Oh, this is like super death-esque. That face. Guitar feedback kind of fading in. this bass riff and the layered guitar riff he is slapping that bass and I love that the kick drum is just accenting bump bump mm. almost feels like we're in like an intermission before we get to the next section now. Wow. What an amazing setup for this. solo is telling me his whole life story. Oh. I just need a minute. I need a minute. This song. Holy crap. This band exists. I can see why they're like the founding fathers of like a metal. I, I mean, I think they're like considered the big four for like death metal. And I can totally see that. These solos, these, oh, these transitions. They really put in so much effort for the production of these songs. People have said this is the best metal album ever and I have no reason to dispute it. Yeah, I believe it too. The ending solo is one of Mustaine's best solos. God, this lineup was fantastic. One of the best metal records of all time. Ooh. So we really are, like, jumping into history here. Okay, let's continue. Back, sing along, crowd vocals. Oh my god. Once I like hear this song more and learn the vocals, like I can just see myself singing along to this as I'm driving in the car, drumming on my steering wheel. That's what I do every single time I listen. Oh, 
Like, mmm. I love it because that is the shit that, like, gets your fans super hyped in live performances and on the record. It's just... Oh, and then they're super nicely layered because it's just, like, padded in there. It's not something that's, like, a major, like, part of that section. It's just, like, softly in there. It's, like, snuggled in just behind his vocals. But it, like, gives it a nice, like, oomph, nice little accent. might be one of the best guitar solos I've ever heard. Oh, and the ending. Oh. Super clean. The way they introduced it, too. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Uh. Oh. I'm overwhelmed. I have no words to describe. What I'm listening to, but there's so much going on. Uh, oof. There's so many deliciously good parts in every one of these songs. And I'm overwhelmed with how much, like, technical and music, like, technical stuff they've added and, like, music production wise. There's a lot of things that they did. And they're subtle. And they go, and they blend, and they're just, mm. yeah, absolutely agree that that is absolutely an amazing solo. <sighs> okay, Five Magics. Is this one also about aliens? We've talked about war, we've talked about aliens. This song was inspired by the 1980 fantasy novel... Master of the Five Magics by Lyndon Hardy. Ooh. The hero of the story has to master the five magics to overthrow the evil prince. The song uses an alternate vocal track for the 2004 remaster as Dave Mustaine could not find the original vocal tracks. Ah! Oh. He couldn't find the original vocal tracks for this song too? Was it the case for, like, most of the songs, I'm assuming, for this first record? Same case for Take No Prisoners and Lucretia. Okay, never mind. Although for the former, Mustang completely re-recorded the vocals. Damn, that would suck to lose, like, the original vocals. Damn. Bestow upon me knowledge... I want to rule this kingdom, dethrone the evil prince's iron fists and velvet gloves of sin. In the novel, Elodar, the protagonist, uses his knowledge of all five magical dis discipline, disciplines, God, in combination <laughs> to defeat, shut up, <laughs> to defeat the leader of the demon army. Give me alchemy, give me wizardry, give me sorcery, thermatology, electricity. Oh. 
the branches of magic the protagonist learns in the book are thaumatology, alchemy, magic, sorcery, and wizardry. I'm gonna have to read this damn book. This sounds as dope as shit. Presumably, Mustaine used electricity instead of magic as fifth power because it flowed better lyrically. Presumably, he also forgot that thermatology isn't a word. The 2004 remaster switches the order of the wizardry and sorcery lines. You know what? Thermatology is a word. As far as we know, it's a word. Now it's a word. It's in a historical metal album. It has to be a word. All right. Next up, we've got Poison Was the Cure. Poison was the cure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remastered, 2004. Oh, this is a shorty. Oh my god. Nice resolve. Oh. Wow. There's so much going on in this. I am so completely overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, first, the intro with the bass, the way that they slap, he just like slapped it, and then I love this like almost, he's just plucking like one string. Oh, and it sounded so good. And then the drum fill sounded huge with like some reverb on there super delicious filled a bunch of space and then they just go right into like double time and the guitar riff that he's doing over these like little stops is delicious well, short and sweet this song sounds like it would be so tiring to play it'd be like it'd be like that one song you know it'd be like that one song that's in your set list we have a couple in one of my bands 
that is like the song that's tiring to play live. <laughs> that seems like it's this, like it would be this song. Poison was the cure. It's a reflection of Dave Mustaine's former heroin addiction and about the relationship he was in with a fellow addict. The title is Analogs Analogous to Methadone. A narcotic often used in treating heroin addiction. In theory, doses of methadone will substitute those of heroin and can gradually be deceased, decreased until the patient is free of their addiction. Often, however, the patient's methadone addiction will simply replace his heroin addiction. It's about my romance with chemical abuse and how I felt that the actual poison was the cure to my problems. Very interesting. Once stalked beneath your shadow, sleepwalking to the gallows, I'm in the sun that beats your brow in till I finally threw the towel in. Really, this track is I'm just here for the instrumentals. You know, that's what I'm really here for. There's just so much to process with this album. Holy cow. Lucretia, that is next. Lucretia. Oh, some laughing. Wow. Different tone. Different vibe. Super catchy. He sounds so much like Axl Rose in this. Cool. big and just reverbed. Oh my god. Oh. So low.
like makes me want to cry. <laughs> I'm getting so emotional. You wouldn't think that metal would make me emotional. It's just so good. Y'all. I just love music so much. And I love in like instruments. And I love playing music. Singing music. Playing instruments. And it's just so cool to be sitting here with y'all. Experiencing this. And like. This is a part of, like, metal history. This is a moment for me. Y'all are watching me experience, like, metal history. I'm just so... In, Spooner is, like, massively snoring, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I am overwhelmed. The guitar solo that we had in this last song... It was divine. He has so much sass. So much character in that solo. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Small intermission. <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. But I'm having such a good time. Like, this is one of those albums that's completely overwhelming and amazing when you first hear it. And it's, like, sold. I'm sold to Megadeth. And I want to hear more. And now it's, like, I just need to actually buy the physical CD and just, like, listen to this on repeat. And the song is about a ghost named Lucretia that Dave Mustaine believed had lived in his attic for some time. And so she got a song... Very interesting. The song uses an alternative vocal track because he lost the vocals. I wonder what ever happened to those vocal tracks. Hypnosis guides my hand. I slip slide through the walkway, sit in Granny's rocking chair. Memories are whirling by. It's super cool that this is about like a ghost. And the song is just like. I don't even know. I don't even know. Beautiful. Amazing. Technically delicious. Okay. Tornado of Souls. This is... Oh, no. Dawn Patrol is only a minute 51 seconds. Do not tell me it has acoustic guitar. If Megadeth has an acoustic guitar, one minute and 50 second little instrumental thing... The tears are going to be shed, okay? That is my weakness, okay? But right now we're doing Tornado of Souls, which sounds freaking awesome. Ugh. I'm here for it. last line of that chorus blow me away I could so see so many people in the crowd live just screaming that blow me away oh Oh. 
they could have done the whole like who's to say with the bo- with the crowd vocals, but it's such a cool little accent that they're just like who, just like it just makes it more punchy, gives it a nice little layer, makes it kind of stick in your head, and gives it just like a little bit of sass, just a little. Mm. Oh, sick drum fill. Ooh, we're building up to something juicy, aren't we? I'm so here for it. sounds hard as shit to play you have to let me know in the comments this sounds so good uh. That solo. Ugh. Why'd you turn comments off this song? I want to hear more. Tornado of Souls. Takes a traumatic turn thematically. Ooh. While many of the album's songs involve aliens, magic, war, and other topics of the sort, this is, according to Mustaine, more about a broken relationship and eagerness to get back in the game, as it were. This is a love song? A breakup song? Called Tornado of Souls. That is like one of the best breakup songs I've ever heard in my life. You got Miley Cyrus having Wrecking Ball, and you released Tornado of Souls. Damn. It's about me getting out of a dysfunctional relationship. It has nothing to do with killing anybody. That was him in 1993. I wrote this about my fiancé of six years, who I broke up with last October. This is in 1990. I just had it. The way I look at it, most redheads are either gorgeous or ugly. I don't consider myself gorgeous, and I don't think I'm the latter, but I get my share of nice women, and I intend to go out and show my, my oats, if you know what I mean. I want to go out and see what I can do, as I am extremely healthy and look a lot different because I've been exercising a lot. I, I don't just sit around inside the house and party. I still have a great time, but I'm looking forward to seeing the women who are out there after I have done my job and worked my ass off with the best music I can play. 
Now I want to see what the rewards are. Instead of looking for the guy who's standing on the corner with certain things that I want or need, this time I am looking to the opposite sex to give me what I want. You were panting so hard over there. Um, without beating around the bush, I'm trying to tell you that I don't want to get high. I'd rather get horny. Hey, man. Whatever floats your boat, it's better to get horny than get high. Um, at least in my opinion. Damn. Great advice. You know? Good for you, Mr. Dave Mustaine. That is your name, right? Yeah, Dave Mustaine. Just want to make sure. This morning I made the call, the one that ends it all. Hanging up, I wanted to cry, but damn it, this well's gone dry. That cooter! She dry! Opening lyrics introduce the main theme of the song. Narrator has had enough of a relationship. He calls it quits. He's broken up about it, but he hasn't even got tears left due to the pain the relationship has already caused him. Why is there a picture of Nicolas Cage? Why does that look like Nicolas Cage? It's probably not. But now I'm safe in the eye of, tor of a tornado. I can't replace the lies that led a thousand days ago. No more living trapped inside in her way. I'll surely die in the eye of the tornado. Blow me away. Safe in the eye of the tornado refers to the narrator being in the center of a metaphorical storm. Everything around him is a mess, but he manages to somehow keep safe. Knowing that the next one will probably be just as explosive, he considers himself in the eye of the storm. He's not trapped by the last girl. So he can move freely and he knows that she's going to hope he dies regardless. Damn. Blow me away refers to how the metaphorical storm is taking away the narrator's ability to care about what happens in his life. As the content, constant stream of negativity around him is starting to make him feel apathetic. At this point, it seems like a nuisance. Ooh, I love that he's referring to like this ex-fiance, this relationship he had as a tornado. And it's just like, she's just creating this like shit storm of shit just around him. And he's uh, trying to get through it. At least that's kind of like what it's about. All right. Wow. I'm just surprised that that's like a breakup song. All right. We're here for the one minute and 51 second song. I'm really nervous though, because like these metal bands, man, always have these like little things it's these minute long songs man that get me in my damn feels let's listen to it <laughs> oh dude is this just like a bass instrumental with obviously drums too vocals in this. Oh, he's doing such a great job just and uh, uh, drowning. Two more air pollution warnings. Still we sleep while I'm off to work while our ne 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 nervous systems check. Wow, while our ne 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 nervous systems check. Mm. And this bass? is being slapped. She's having a great time. She is like Anastasia Steele in the Red Room and their bass player is Christian Grey. You heard it here first. kissy sound he made and then this like kind of he's almost doing like a is he British 
I'm going to assume he's not British. Let me know in the comments. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, I guess I could just check. Hold on. Hold on. No, he's American. That's what I thought. Yeah, he was kind of doing this, like, British sort of accent that was, like, very, like, uh, uh, uh. Man, some face. Just, oh. What a nice little instrumental track. Dawn of Dawn Patrol, not Dawn of, just Dawn. Short and somber warning about the possibility of a nuclear holocaust, another war themed sort of thing. More specifically, what life would be like after the incident, post apocalyptic. Humans would be forced to live underground because the atmosphere would be so contaminated with radioactive pollution left over from the nuclear weapons. Dawn patrol is a military term referring to early hour patrols by fighters. Mustaine's voice was meant to sound like a mole on his track. He created this tone by drawing air over his bottom lip while biting down on his upper teeth. Drawing air over his bottom lip while biting down on his upper teeth. The song serves mostly as the intro to the next track during live performances. Mustaine and the other guitarists exit the stage to give the spotlight to David Ellefson, whose bass line is the main point of interest. Mustaine then sings the vocals from someplace off stage. Dude. If you've seen Megadeth live, will you let me know uh, where and when and how that experience was for you? We have one more song of this. Rust in Peace, dot, 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 Polaris. I'm assuming that this is a two-parter, just like the first one which was Holy Wars into the Punishment. Oh, dude, just thinking about the transition live. So Dave Mustaine walks off stage, sings the vocals off stage, gives the bass player and the drummer just some light to shine. Coda! Go to something now. Gives the light to the bass player, drummer, and then once they end that song, then the drummer just immediately goes into this, gives Dave the time to come back onto the stage, get his guitar back on, get ready to go. Ooh, here for the live setting. Yes! same people. His vocals, what he's doing with his voice sounds so different. At least in my opinion, it sounds almost like Cartman in a way, Eric Cartman, a little bit just with some of the pronunciation.
love that. Yeah, something Polaris, the end doesn't scare us. Dude. I think he's also saying Megadeth in there, and I also really like... It's kind of a title track, Rust in Peace, almost as if they're like... Robots or something. exhausting to listen to oh my god but in like such a good way it just seems like it would be so hard to play there's so many little transitions like oh my god there's so much going on whoo this album was amazing and kind of exhausting but amazing exhausting in the best way like a really good workout i'm just more like overwhelmed with like everything that they put into this record there's so many things that i caught but i just haven't vocalized because like as soon as i notice something there's like fourth other things that have happened that i'm like oh my god that's what they did oh my god rust in peace huh Rust in Peace. Alright, so this is called Rust in Peace Polaris. Let's look at these lyrics real quick. Polaris! I really loved the lyrics. Uh, what was it? Eradication of as population loves Polaris. Mm. Eradication of... It's a closing and titular track from Rest in Peace. First called Child Saint. It was written by Dave Mustaine before 1983. Long before he had even formed Megadeth. Ooh, so it's like an OG song. He said he was driving home from Lake El Sanon. He was tailgating somebody racing down the freeway when he saw this bumper sticker on the car and it said, you know, this tongue-in-cheek stuff like one nuclear bomb could ruin your whole day. And then I looked on the other side and it said, may all your nuclear weapons rust in peace. And I'm going, rust in peace? Damn, that's a good title. And I'm thinking like, what do they mean, rust in peace? I could just see it now, all these warheads sitting there, stockpiled somewhere like Seal Beach, you know, all covered with rust and stuff, with kids out there spray painting the stuff, you know. The lyrics are from the point of view of a nuclear missile called Polaris. Oh, interesting. 
When the missile is launched, it will destroy many lives and maybe even terminate humanity. But the lyrics ultimately predict that there will be peace with the aphorism. The warheads with all will all rest in peace. As soon as the fucking thing detonates, it discharges nuclear fallout. People think they can go underground and get away from it, but what happens when you come up? It's still there. There is no safety. Intended the song to be the grand finale of the album, so there is no guitar solo on the track. Just a few quick lead guitar notes in the beginning to set the mood. This is my fave tune on the record at the time. Producer Mike Clink was also excited about it. The main riff in Rust is like no other in rock. Absolutely unique. Dude. Yeah. Definitely could tell that it was a really good closing song. And that song is like, there's so much happening and it's so long that it's like exhausting afterwards and what I was like picturing myself doing was like in the live setting after like dawn what is it dawn patrol after I was envisioning Dave coming back after dawn patrol and then playing this song and me being in the crowd and that's why I keep saying I felt exhausted because I feel like after seeing Megadeth and them ending in that song I would just be like all right <laughs> time to go home and stuff my face and sit on the bed and just like think about what I just saw. <laughs> oh my god. High Priest of Holocaust, fire from the sea, nuclear winter spreading disease. This is meant to the to represent the after effects of a war and how it can impact the environment on Earth, turning it into a nuclear wasteland and destroying an entire population on Earth. This is like, dude, I really love all of the themes that Megadeth has for this record. You got aliens, you got war, you got futuristic fantasy stuff, you got a banger of a breakup album or song, but I really, really enjoy it. Oh my gosh. Just fun, good, produced thrash metal. I can totally see how this is like one of the founding fathers that brought in death metal and inspired bands like Death and Morbid Angel and even Pantera to like get into heavier stuff. They did some really good stuff in this record. I'm just like thinking over, I'm a little overwhelmed because they just technically speaking and production wise like bro, this record is on another level. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave y'all to it um I have so much to process now but I loved this record so if you're still here if you're still watching I really appreciate you being here and thank you so much once again to everybody that voted in the polls for this record I really am just I'm so happy that we were finally able to listen to one of the four thrash daddies <laughs> that's what I'm calling them so um, yeah, if you want to subscribe to the channel, feel free to join the Discord, join the Mosh Pit. Uh, the invite link, invite link is down below. Uh, comment down below. Stuff about, uh, Megadeth. I almost said, called them Pantera. My brain is mush. <laughs> um, what's your favorite record by Megadeth? Is it Rust in Peace? Have you seen them live? Uh, what, what do you think about this record? And, uh... Yeah, let me know if you want more Megadeth. I'm more than down, okay? It looks like Slayer is winning our poll right now, so they'll be our next Thrash Daddy on the list. Um, and that's what I got. So wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, thank you so much, and I will see y'all very soon. Bye, you guys.